Hey, um, this is for our YouTube channel, so I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. I don't want a long video that's gonna take forever to upload or for you all to watch. I'm gonna get to the point. So in my previous video, we talked about red flags. Uh, I had a person trying to contact me and there were some red flags that were brought up. So I talked to his instructor, I actually reached out to him. And in the martial arts world, uh, sometimes we, don't, we feel that's not necessary. Don't talk to those people, there are competition. But in the same sense, we also have to look at the industry. Now, whether you agree or disagree with what they teach and what they do, you know, I'll reach out to the owner or the instructor of an academy and say, hey, what's going on here with this guy? He keeps contacting me or whatever. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had students in my area wanting to switch schools. And I said, have you talked to your instructor yet? Have you kind of worked things out? Maybe maybe it's something you can work out with them because it sounds kind of petty what you're, what you're trying to leave for. So, anywho... This guy, he's been contacting me for a few months and some red flags were raised because first thing he asked me is, um, how long to get to black belt? And I'm like, well, you know, that's kind of like a subjective question. And it was rude in my day to ask that. Like you never asked, you know, the instructor said, I could give you the time. You can count your belts and the times between the belts and figure it out that way. That's what he would tell me. I mean, I can't really tell you when you test. I mean, there might be a minimum requirement. I don't know. It was kind of rude. I found that out. Like you don't ask that. Or you don't ask, like, when's my next belt test? You have to do it more tactfully. And, and you can ask, like, when is the next test for the studio, sir, so I can prepare? And then it was a different story. You're like, how do I get the black belt? And then it was a different story. You know, it's like, you saw more serious. Like, when do I get my black belt? It was rude. So that was a red flag. And then I asked him, he kept asking about it. And I, and I said, look, he said, I don't want to start all over. And I said, but you're a yellow belt in Taekwondo. And you did wrestling for a year in high school over 15 years ago. So it's not like you have a whole lot of experience here. You're not really starting over. You haven't really begun. And I, I mentioned how I had a student who had been training in Kung Fu for over 10 years. And he was glad to come as a no belt and earn his white belt. And now he's one of my blue belts. You know, and he had a lot of training and knowledge. So I had to explain humility to him. So I reached out to his instructor because these flags were all popping up. And... The instructor did contact me back, and we had a nice conversation. Now, this is from a school that's in Country Walk. I'm in Homestead. It's about two or three towns over, so we're talking over 20 miles. You know, it's, it's a good chunk of, of, of time to train. And for me, if someone is coming from another school, you know, to, it is a red flag, but sometimes it could be maybe you offer something that their town doesn't offer, and they want to do that. That could be. Or it could be that, the reason you're not in your town trying to do martial arts with the options available is because you're trying to run or hide or something or you got something up your sleeve it just is what it is from my experience working with studios and so i talked to him and he said the guy's trouble he um he he uh he doesn't he, he always canceled his program and then after he canceled it and let's say he took a, a belt test and said i'm gonna quit cancels his program and then gets a refund on his credit card after he took the training and, and took the test and got the belt. So he basically stiffed the studio after taking their services, which is a no-no. I mean, if you want your money back, I'll give you money back depending on the situation. I've refunded people. If I kicked them out, i say, here's your money back. I don't want to hear from you. But if you use the services, you just don't take that. That's, that's some guys, you know, that's how they make their living, you know. And uh, so there was, there was concern with that. So I said, okay, this guy is trouble. And he, we talked, and that was it. And I basically told the person never to contact me again you know I said look I've talked to your instructor I had some questions and concerns and they all kind of check out and I'm sorry but you're gonna have to look for somewhere else and for me now back in the day when I used to work at Hurricane Andrew in those days I was a young uh, guy I was like 17 and then I was 18 kind of managing a studio before I opened my first one um, and I remember they used to sign anybody up because it was about we got to get somebody on the mat and I'm like okay we could do that. But, you know, the issue is this, you know, um, that person might not work out. And then that person wouldn't work out because they were a little weird. Like every other person was weird back then. If you did a martial art, if you worked in the martial arts in the mid 90s, every other person in your studio was a weirdo. And they usually caused problems and they pushed people away. And all the good paying customers, let's call them that would go away <laughs> and then you were left with these weird people that would never get anybody enrolled in your studio because everyone was scared of them they were creeped out by them or whatever or they just did strange stupid stuff so 
you know, that, that was an issue back then. And I remember when I opened my first school, I said, that's not going to happen. And every time there was something strange, I booted the person. Or what I do now, we have such a process like you can't just show up at the studio. You have to be registered. It's a one-day trial. Okay, if you don't like it, I give you your 20 bucks back. If you like it, I take 20 bucks off the first month's tuition. So it's basically a free trial if you want to consider it that way. But you got to pay for the free trial first. You gotta, I got to have your spot reserved. And in that process, when I'm talking to somebody, if they don't seem productive, if they don't seem like they're a fit for me, you know, I might not even let them take the trial. Say, look, I don't think I'm for you. Or like in the case I had a, a child who wasn't ready and I told the mom, we'll try again. Your child's six. I mean, he's old enough, but he's just not ready. Maybe we can try again next month. Let me know. I set an appointment. If it doesn't work out then, look, here's your $20 back. We'll try again next year because he's just not ready yet. And I think we have to say as martial arts instructors, no, once in a while. We have to say, no, you can't do it here. Maybe there's another school for you, but I'm not the one for you. There's nothing wrong with the word no. There's nothing wrong with telling a student, no, you can't do that yet. There's nothing wrong with that. We've gotten so used to saying yes all the time and helping them, that we forgot sometimes it's powerful to say no and good for them to say no and give them a reason why you say no. Okay, so that's it. Enjoy. Have a great kicking day.